Perfect. Yes, we will see you Corey. Good. Good to see all of you guys. Thank you so much for coming over. I'm glad we're doing this anyway. Um, you know, it's really nice to see your faces. And um, so we are a crypto and digital art fair uh, going online for the second time in a row uh, this time. Um, so we have a, a lot of amazing exhibitors this time around. I think that the quality of the work is just fantastic and overwhelming. Uh, and we definitely have to do it again soon. But um, for now, we just wanted to welcome all of you here and uh, want to introduce the team. And uh, we are doing a very, very, very tiny selection from the, uh, from the works that we have. But we're super lucky here to have uh, our exhibitors with us and the artists, so it's, it's really nice. So maybe Andrea, if you want to introduce yourself and yeah, just sure. and it'd be great. So I'm Andrea and I've been talking to all of you, uh, I think on Slack. So it's great to see all your faces here. Uh, we are so excited about this edition. I think we've never had work this amazing and we are very excited to share it with everyone and to do this tour and to let artists and exhibitors talk about their work. That is always Kadab's mission. So I'll let Jess introduce herself. Thank you, Andrea. Hi, everyone. I'm just echoing uh, uh, what Andrea and Elena are saying. The work is incredible and it's amazing to connect with so many talented artists and gallerists and curators. And uh, I have so much fun every time we do one of these. So very excited that we're doing this again. Um, I'm Jess Knatzer. I am guest curator uh, alongside Elena and Andrea and the Kadaf team, as well as Digital Art Month. And I also run a little studio called Studio As We Are. Uh, where I really work to develop artist first programs and exhibitions uh, that really kind of cultivate support and advance voices in new media. So it's really great to be here today. Um, and whilst I'd love to go through every single booth because I want to show off every single person's work, um, we are doing like uh, Andrea and Elena said a small selection and I'm, I'm very excited to share some, some pieces with you, but please, please make sure you go and look at everyone's work because everyone deserves uh, a spotlight and their work is absolutely incredible and I, I can't wait to see who collects it because it's worth collecting. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, next person can thank you. <laughs> so I think that how we're gonna how we're gonna structure this tour is I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna let each exhibitor talk about their booth uh, for around 10 minutes so that everybody gets a chance to talk. So I will, you can tell me which work to go to. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna first go into each book and then you, I'm gonna go full screen so we can enjoy the full work and really see it big on our screen. So everybody, please let me know if you can see it. Also, this meeting is being recorded just in case um, so that everyone's aware. And so here we have our first booth. So Judy, can you please tell us a bit about this booth and data? Yes, uh, thank you so much for doing this. And it's great to see everyone. My name is Judy Mam. I'm uh, from Dada.art. And Dada is, uh, for those who don't know us, is a platform we started out in 2014, uh, but we got into blockchain in 2017, which means we were very early on uh, the like uh, tokenizing um, art. And in fact, we were the first art by actual artists to be tokenized on Ethereum. We launched this collection, which was our first collection of NFTs called the Crips and Weirdos on October of 2017, which was right after the Crypto Punks and before the Crypto Kitties. And so this is considered really one of the seminal uh, and very, uh, you know, veteran pioneering collections of NFT art. We were the first, as I said, to, to um, tokenize art by actual artists. So this is a collection of about a hundred different drawings that we curated. The reason why we called it Crips and Weirdos, basically we wanted to test this premise of blockchain. We wanted to see if that would work out uh, for us uh, moving forward, because we are a, a, a place where people um, speak to each other through drawings, which we will, uh, will be able to see uh, in the next uh, collections. But we launched it on Halloween on October 31st of 2017. And so we, we basically curated from many different visual conversations that we had, we curated these drawings and uh, we did it with five levels of scarcity. 
Uh, and so um, that's why they're all creepy. And if they're not creepy, they're weird. Uh, yeah. But uh, um, we uh, were very fond of this collection. And for instance, one, what, you know, some many of the artists who, who started here had no idea of blockchain whatsoever. We onboarded, in, onboarded them to the blockchain and now some of them have become pretty well known in the crypto art space. I think one of these NFTs uh, uh, the one with the guy with the fork and the tongue hanging out was the first NFT that Jason Bailey bought, and it's the one that uh, appears on on his article about blockchain art is here, which was one of like I think the first major article that uh, appeared on the subject. So. Uh, and we're going to be bringing back, the reason why we're exhibiting all of these collections, just to give context, is that, uh, yeah, that you can go to the, there you are, um, uh, is because these are what we call our vintage collections, uh, the 10 collections that we issued from 2017 to 2019. And we are going to be actually uh, putting them in a, bar, in a marketplace, in a special marketplace. They are not for sale right now. This is kind of like a retrospective. And it's also a preview for uh, when we open this market exclusively for these collections, because uh, we are actually leaving the art market, as you know it, behind and we're uh, launching our invisible economy, which is going to be a different economic system for collectors and artists. So these are going to be uh, exclusive to that. Um, yeah, that was in Miami for when we were at Kadaf and, and uh, we had some masks made of the creeps and weirdos. Um, and so let's go to the next one uh, since uh, we have, yeah, you can go. Actually, uh, the next one is uh, the one called pop art, the one where you see the Mona Lisa and the, the, the yeah, that one. But I'm, I'm going to try to go chronologically. Uh, this was the second collection that we launched and I, it, it actually was launched as another experiment. Uh, this conversation, as you see, each one of the panels is created by a different artist. So uh, this is what happens in data. Somebody makes a drawing, somebody replies with another drawing and people follow the theme as if they were doing like a musical improvisation. And it's pretty amazing. This one ended up being like, uh, we call it pop art. It's kind of like a reinterpretation of very, very famous works of art. But we took this conversation to experiment layering NFTs uh, at the time crypto Crypto kitties were all the rage. This was at the beginning of 2018. And so we decided, and there was a, a platform called Kitty Hats where like you could give to your cats, you could give them berets or, or sunglasses, or you could give them accessories, tattoos. And then they, you know, they talked to us and they said, well, they could have art too, right? And we said, yeah, cats should be able to collect art just like everyone else. So we took that collection and we created these NFTs so that people who own crypto kitties could uh, could buy um, could buy art. If you want to go to that one, <laughs> so so um, they also had uh, uh, several. I think five levels of scarcity, and it was uh, kind of like a really fun project, but very experimental. And I have to remind everyone that at the time, very early in 2018, people really didn't. They weren't even called NFTs yet. Uh, um, in in many cases, we were like, it's crypto art, it's blockchain art, it's, you know, some kind of token. But also uh, there was, there, there was, the market was very small and there were only a, a few intrepid collectors that, and I think we have one of them in the house. I think Ben Wen may have one of the creeps. Uh, there were very few collectors collecting this because people at the time were very concerned about whether they could hang the art on the walls. That was like the major kind of question that we had to answer. People didn't understand what to do with them or like it was very, very early. So so uh, all of our collections were very experimental. Um, but with this one, we're going to be launching without the cats, of course, because it really deserves. It's really one of people's favorite collections. Uh, next, I really don't remember the chronological order. I think we can go to, oh, wait, let's go to Maria, to Maria Garcia, which was a, a solo show that we did at Kadaf, New York in 20, that was 2019, right? Um, and Maria, this is, I believe it's a, if you, we can go to the video, uh, Andrea. Maria Garcia is a, a, an artist from Venezuela who is not, 
a, a, a trained artist. She didn't go to art school, but she has made, we have about 134,000 drawings on Dada and she has made over 13,000 drawings. So she's the most prolific artist on Dada. And we love, love, love her like super raw style. And for Kadav, New York, uh, we decided that was the first time that we participated. And we decided to showcase Maria because to us, she really, really kind of like exemplified the promise of blockchain uh, and NFT art being uh, uh, an amazing resource for artists from being somebody who was just drawing. She found Dada through Facebook. She started drawing on Dada and soon she found a community and she was like populating Dada with this amazing collection of cars um, and, and all kinds of topics. And for Kadav, what we did was like a 360 immersive uh, installation, as you can see, that where, where we basically did a curated selection of, of, of some of her most, um, to, you know, like the topics like these women that she does and nightmares and cars and, and stuff like that. And so um, we're very proud that now she's in Rarible. She, she has actually, a, a, she actually has a piece at, at Kate Bass Gallery here at the show, which is amazing to us. Uh, and she, uh, her story is really interesting because she was living at a car wash with her mom. She works at a car wash. By car wash, I mean not even a machine one like we have in the United States, but washing cars by hand. And with the money that she was able to make uh, selling her art in, uh, with NFTs and also like with Rari and you know accruing Rari and with the crypto coins and everything, she was able to buy a house for her and her mom, a little house in Cumana, uh, Venezuela. So uh, um, she was, I think, one of also our, our early, early um, shows. We can go now to that one, to the one with the crocodile, um, which uh, it's called Sight on Scene. This also was a very interesting exper experimental um, um, conversation. We did this for the Radical uh, for Change, uh, Radical Exchange Conference in Detroit. It was the first time that something called a channel auction was was proved. A channel auction is a was tested is a combination of an English auction and a Dutch auction. So uh, you know you start with a top price and then people bid up and then uh, as they meet in the middle, it, it was a, a very unique thing. It was the first time it was ever tested. But also the interesting part, if you go to to the third to the first video to the second video, that's one of the yes. You, it was a live auction of a work that was being created as people were bidding. So, because on our visual conversations, you know, we can we we do this uh, we do this collaborative um, uh, live performances where we put like a zoom and we can see all the artists can share their screen and people are drawing and people were bidding on on stuff that they didn't know what was going to end up looking like. That's why it was called sign on scene. And in the end, because of the collaborative nature of the conversation, two, the two top bidders decided to pool the money so that the artist could get more. And they decided to co-own the conversation. And by co-owning the conversation, it meant that they, we were not going to divide the conversation in two. They both have like a, a multi-signatory wallet where they both own it and they both need to decide what to do with it. And so that was also kind of, of a first. So there you can see me, uh, um, I was being the auctioneer. And from this conversation, uh, you can see the paper toys. If you go to the second frame, Marco Subak, one of our artists created these wonderful paper toys that inspired by the conversation. And then uh, Angie Taylor, who is a wonderful artist who also has a booth. Uh, if you go to the VR, uh, the last video, has started creating this amazing VR landscape uh, with the conversation. I, I, I mean, I don't know if like the video is gonna play, but you're gonna soon see, she took the conversation together with other data artists. Data artists have started to do some VR, but they really didn't know what they were doing. So in comes Angie and she starts kind of playing around and in, a, in an immersive, First, she did this kind of gallery curved wall, and then she also did this immersive experience. Uh, so it's a conversation that has had many, many legs, and it shows like the diversity of, of things that can happen 
um, you know, with collaboration between different artists and in the world of NFTs where it's easy to, to basically uh, also track attribution and package these things in a way that it can be a really great experience for collectors. We can go to the next one. Uh, I don't really know at this point. To me, everything happened two years ago, so I never know. I never know when when was what. But you can see the. We can go to. Um, oh, there you can see the yeah the the immersive. Let's go to. Uh, I think uh, this control actually, which was the second collection, the one in the bottom. Yes, that one. This control was the second collection that we uh, launched um, after after the second collection of a of a visual conversation, and it was the first one that we did one one on ones, meaning unique art pieces. We did uh, this for NFT.NYC. So each one of these panels uh, was uh, was at the time one ETH, which at the time was one hundred and fifty dollars. This was also in uh, I believe 20, early 2019. And at the time, uh, you know, that was a lot of money for crypto art. No? People were thinking, wow, $150 for one of these. Uh, if you can go back, uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful collection. This is only uh, a short version of it. If you will go to, uh, you can see the movie there, but uh, also the full, the full conversation is in the yeah in the in that screen so uh, that that was what um, what we 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 had in our own marketplace on Dada and That's amazing. Uh, yeah thank uh, you Judy mm -hmm. <laughs> this is quite great uh, do you uh, so do we want to move to another uh, exhibitor right now do we have more time for Judy Judy do, do you want to if you just give me a couple of seconds i would like just to show yes, if sure. we can show uh we can show the date one which is called the screens and exhibition i mean they're all super great you we can go them. in you can go in the one that is moving right there is the dadagan which we also exhibited at kadaf miami uh where uh basically we took uh uh, with um, roboticist and artist Alexander Rieben, we took the data set of Dada, Dada art and he taught a GAN, a, a robot, how to draw. And as you can see at the beginning, it was all very amorphous, but towards the end, uh, the, the GAN was drawing from our data set. At the time, we had like 150 draw, uh, thousands, thousand drawings. And this robot uh, ended uh, drawing uh, portraits and doing really spooky spooky things and that that is actually the gun and artist uh, the one that you saw uh, the show before is a gun talking to to artists uh, art, art, artists um, responding to the gun which is called the Daga. and just uh, uh, I would like to show the Tate one um, which is um, yeah. it's the one in the middle actually uh, or the writer that one this uh, we were invited to the Tate London and we did this live drawing exhibition also where uh, the Dadagan made the first drawing so that's where we introduced the Dadagan and then it, it was a uh, um, uh, coincided with the retrospective of Nam Jun Pike and so we had artists from all over the world do this live drawing at the you know like we were streaming them live at the museum and we also had people at the museum draw with Wacom tablets and uh, I think it was uh, other than, I believe Kevin McCoy from Monograph, I think this is the only other instance of NFT art to have been performed and created. And this actually the only instance where uh, it was created at uh, the Tate Museum from around the world. And, um, and this collection, we launched the sketches for it. They're, they are on super rare. But we are going to be including it in our in our new marketplace as well, and uh, I just just feel free to to visit our booth because we have some other beautiful conversations there, and thank I really you, appreciate the opportunity. I know, thank you so much. We love the work; it's yeah, really cool, and it looks amazing on a huge uh, walls as well, huge screens. Yes, yes. as uh, a lot of works too. 
All right, Andrea. Okay, to. so thank you. I feel we need like part two and three and everything uh, because it's fantastic. Like I just want to make these tours very long because I, I know about every single artwork. So now we are here. So maybe Jess, can you start telling us a little bit about your two, your booth that you have with her visions? Hi, yeah, of course, I would love to. Um, I'm very excited to kind of be back with Her Visions, who is, uh, what is, it's a, a collective that really champions um, uh, femme-focused uh, artists, um, and they're based in London. It's run by Zeba Jabbar, who uh, I've been working with for a few years now. Um, uh, this will be like our third iteration of showcasing work together at Kadaf. Uh, we really work to bring um, a group of femme focused artists together that are you know from our our different networks um, and this collection is really exciting uh, because it's kind of like our first venture together in the nft space after you know spending the last several months talking about nfts and strategizing about nfts and what do we want to do as curators who have communities and how do we want to work with the artists that we work with to kind of put something out there we finally went and did this and so this is really an extension of the project that we did together with infinite objects for the first Kadaf online and we brought these artists back to mint work um, on the different platforms that they wanted to kind of go for. We felt that uh, we didn't want to confine the artists to one platform. So some are on Foundation, some are on Rarible, some are on Zora, um, uh, but to, we've collected the work together in our booth so that you can look at it as a, a collection of artwork. Um, this specific one that you're looking at right now is by Pinar Yaldis. Um, it's called Pax Eterna. And, um, it means eternal peace. And uh, Dr. Pranar Yaldis is, is a really great artist. We love working with her. She's an award-winning architect and a professor at the University at California, San Diego. Um, and she really, she works to develop within biological sciences and digital technologies through architectural installations, kinetic sculptures, sound, video, and drawing. We also did an infinite objects piece of a similar uh, character as well because we wanted to be able to then offer any NFT collectors the opportunity to own a physical piece as well. So that's kind of been the extension for us with, with this booth specifically, like I mentioned. Um, also, if we wanna to go to Rory's piece, Rory is also here. So I would love for Rory to maybe, um, if, if she wants to speak up about uh, her work, she can. This is very exciting to me because she's actually minted an augmented reality piece, which is very on point with Digital Art Month. She's also showing at Digital Art Month. Uh, love working with Rory. Rory, did you want to say something? If you're here? Okay, maybe. Okay, so. Sorry, I was on mute, actually. <laughs> okay. I apologize. No worries. Um, Thanks for having me. Yeah, like, um, I'm very excited about everything that's going on right now. Like, I feel like we're at such a crazy pivotal point in time and definitely with art and technology and whatnot and you know we talk about what happened in 2017 like it's like ancient history like you know that these were the beginnings of like whatever we're in right now and um that's what's so fascinating to me about all of this and for me to be able to have an ar piece and minted i feel like um it's kind of like the true spirit in a sense of how i think of NFTs and digital art, like I feel like, you know, it's great that as a digital artist to have the ability to have someone collect my static work or my animated work. But more than that, you know, working in AR, someone can collect an experience, which is just phenomenal. Like you get to have this experience, you get to rotate it, you get to like walk around it and place it wherever. So it's like you're really getting something. You're getting this like weird spiritual ethereal thing. And um yeah, it's really powerful and I'm super stoked if you can already tell but uh, it's, yeah. it's really, I, I love that you went in this direction and it's really exciting to have it here because um I think we're going to see a lot more augmented reality works probably being minted very soon but this I feel like is not as you know like trendy at the moment so it's kind of exciting to to see this yeah. it's very very cool and very exciting um we also, so we have the next piece, if you kind of go look um, 
uh, this is by Sibeli Cavalli Bastos. Uh, uh, they are based in Berlin. Uh, this piece actually sold yesterday um, by a foundation. So no more bidding for this one, but um, uh, it's it's a very special piece. We really love it. It's called Belong. Um, it's inspired by uh, motivational digital posters and uh, greeting stickers uh, uh, disseminated through uh, WhatsApp. Um, and so basically, uh, Sibeli likes to comment on uh, platform capitalism, among other things. And uh, I think this is just a very special piece and it's super beautiful and, and meaningful. And I'm very excited that it's been collected. So I hope the collector really, really cherishes and enjoys this piece. Um, so that's exciting. And then the next piece, um, this is Coco uh, Magnussen. Coco actually, uh, actually works with Sibeli um, in, in Berlin, this piece is called PlayStation 66. It's actually like several minutes long. I want to say it's like over three minutes long. So this is just a very small clip that you're obviously seeing at the moment, but uh, it was inspired by paranormal, paranormal photos featured in like na late night, supernatural TV shows in the nineties um, and the sense of unease often found in like uh, cursed images. So it's just like very interesting. Definitely look more into Coco if you have some time. This is the first time we're exhibiting work by Coco actually, um, but we love, love, love when an artist that we work with um, uh, recommends an, another artist to bring in. And I think that's kind of like the special thing about our, our um, uh, practices uh, studio as we are in her visions we're very open-minded to bringing in um, you know new people as well so uh, and then quickly because of time oh yes okay so Sabrina this is a very special piece as well um, this is called a mu sorry a mu immutable villas if I can speak and it's part of a series of abstract interior spaces with electronic textures and architectural elements um, and it's subtly animated. Uh, it, I think these pieces are really cool. This is also um, kind of an extension of the infinite objects piece that Sabrina created last year as well. So it's really cool to have another piece by Sabrina. Um, Sabrina is based in Montreal and uh, her work is, you know, includes videos and animation and installations and sculptures as well as audiovisual performances. Um, so again, really nice to be working uh, with her on this. And then the last piece we have here um, is Olga Fedorova. Uh, and uh, Olga works at the intersection of photography, painting, digital um, imaging and installations. Uh, we often choose to show a lot of different like speculative type sketches that Olga creates. Um, this one's called Virtual Insanity and uh, the artist wrote, the rate of mutation is inconsistent, he said, and it started to mutate at a cosmic speed. And that's kind of what this piece is for her. So anyway, check all these pieces out. Again, they're all minted on various platforms. We wanted to support that um, uh, based on, you know, without any judgment of what the artist wanted to choose. And so uh, we hope you like uh, this collection of work and um, definitely head to our booth to discover more information as well. And we'll be releasing kind of meet the artist videos uh, throughout the, the duration of the fair as well. So you can kind of hear directly from the artists that we are working with. Thank you, Jess. That was fantastic. So yes, visit this booth. And also on Instagram, you have such like an amazing collection <laughs> and the infinite object collection that uh, we created for Kata Ferris and so much more. So definitely. Yeah. Do we yeah. want to do that quickly or are we going to? Here, why don't we keep going through the boots and then we can okay. show the infinite sure. objects page so that we can show the beautiful collection of infinite objects that we have for this edition. I mean, yeah, I also wanted to add that we can share the links to all the booths, maybe if Andre, Andre, you have them anyway, so maybe we can share them in the chat here and later in the follow up email to the event break so that you can explore on your right. own as well after the tour is over. Of course. So now here we have one Dutch project. So if you want to present your beautiful booth. Hi, how are you? Um, Marina is here from One Dutch Project. Hey, Marina. Yeah. We're really happy to participate with Kadaf this year. All our artists uh, presented all their work specifically for Kadaf and uh, developed all the series to debut at Kadaf this year specifically. 
Um, so we at One Dutch, we curate and develop a series with established up, uh, up and coming artists. Um, so we're looking right now at Anna Zeng's uh, project called uh, Butterfly Effect Series, which is uh, based um, on, uh, inspired by Ray Bradbury classic, uh, The Sound of Thunder. We felt that um, that gentle prose uh, never received a proper reflection uh, in our visual culture. And uh, Anna's series definitely accomplished that task with ease and elegance, uh, delivered sort of the message and visualization. Um, Anna is um, an award-winning book illustrator and graphic designer and digital artist who is based in Russia. And this is her first digital uh, art series and NFT release. Uh, the series is uh, six pieces. Together, they are a complete story of uh, butterfly effect. And you can see them all uh, in our booth. We felt that it resonates with the current vast development of the blockchain industry and sort of the digital space that we're in. Um, butterfly effect is existing sort of visualization um, of the thrills and the perils of the technology and, and the impacts where it's leading us all today. So it's kind of an abstract visualization of time, of technology, blockchain, crypto, cryptocurrency, uh, evolution, where it's taken us all sort of take on it. Uh, another artist that we have is Danini. Um, she is a performing visual artist also from Russia, St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. And we present here two NFTs called Private Performances. One is called Peep Show, which is based on an actual performance she did in 2020 Benali in Moscow. She performed herself. So yes, this is her sort of dressed and performed. She's, we did a, an interview actually yesterday with her, with Elena, and she explained how she's into shocking experiences. She likes to sort of um, shocking effect on people. I think like she's known to be more of a sort of next Marina Abramovich. The second piece is Venice Lion, which she performed in 2019 in Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. Another interesting artist is Alexander Blot. He is a winning street artist. And this is his very first digital artworks that he ever done. And this is his debut NFT collection for which he animated three works and did an original soundtrack. Uh, which are quite interesting. He's a very spiritual guy, and uh, it sort of uh, relates to growth of blockchain and crypto industries, and also uh, connects to humanity and spiritualization and relationships between human relationships. And you can see how he sort of interconnects um, humanity and there is uh, interconnection with female and male representation and it's kind of very zen and bitcoin and the music is very sort of meditative and balancing so he's he's very interesting personality and um he, I, I think his color schemes are very delicate and interesting um, very exciting guy. He normally does like very huge murals on the walls. So this was an interesting project to work with him. Um, another interesting person we have, which is quite very different from the rest of the group, I feel like is 3D Fraction, uh, who is a European autodact uh, artist uh, who's um, 
who prefers to be completely anonymous in terms of female or male. <laughs> uh, and the work is very different. It's completely created by, created by knots, uh, meaning it's fully programmed by mathematical calculations developed through computers. So the, uh, the image that you see, the light, the colors develop, even the names, the titles are fully produced by mathematical calculations uh, that she programs. So um, the sapphire blue that you see right now on the screen, um, the kind of hollow images through the, the bodies, these all 3D uh, body sculptures that are built sometimes take between 18 to 36 hours to produce by computers, um, are all kind of machine produced. And, um, you know, we wish we had more space in the booth uh, other than 12, but you can see more now open C page. Uh, we have three works by her. Um, uh, so this quite interesting collection. She's quite up and coming, exciting artist. And another one that we have uh, is Artyom Miralevich. He is originally from Belarus, and he has animated also series uh, for underwater creatures. And we have an animated sort of ship in the sea with kind of scary creatures uh, roaming the waters. So he's. This is also his very first digital take on. Um, on art, but he's been known and around for many years, and uh, he usually does calligraphy and um, oil paintings, and been around. And he has like this fascination with water and creatures, and um, he wanted to do this kind of detailed, moving put 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 his put his paintings into like a moving distraction. Sort of. Beautiful, thank you, Marina. This is, so yes, it's like calligraphy. Like if you look at it, I wish we could zoom in even more to see like yeah. all the details of the artwork. It is absolutely I think, Yeah, you can see a few more on our open ceiling. So there's a, there's a collection of three of those with Poseidon and a ship in a city. So yeah, there's three of those, three of blots, yeah, and three of three diffraction. So all of them are available on our open ceilings. Amazing, we will share those. We will share the link to your booth and to everyone's booth and the link to- So uh, that the link to the marketplace. And okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Now we have Rory Scott. Uh, Rory, if you want to tell us a bit about your booth, Sure. So my booth, I don't know, hold on. My booth is basically, uh, I don't know, an accumulation of all my various styles. Um, this piece right here, Biomechatronic, is basically an animation that I created when I was kind of going through a period of thinking about rebirth, change, regrowth, and I kind of was working with a lot of different um, aquatic sort of themes in my mind and thinking about like biomechanical life in a sense and um, my other piece psychology which is red is also um, featured is along the same sort of like um, thought pattern of thinking about life reimagined through technology and um, combining you know life with a uh, machine that's something I think about a lot in my work I am very much interested in time and so like um if you go to the piece that's at the bottom in the middle um equinox this piece is from 2015 and this is when I start thinking about seriously thinking about the style of what I wanted to produce. And so you can see some of those elements still exist in my work today. And if you move, um, I don't know, like I put all my pieces in AR for everybody to be able to enjoy and pull into their homes and be able to experience the 
the art in a way in which I feel like it is meant to be, but has not been able to be shown in a way until AR has become something that has become more accessible. So now I can have you know, my work a uh, very large size and people can enjoy it in a way in which it's not just looking at their screens or, you know, having to be projected and having to think about light and saturation, like the works are in some way kind of like native to a digital environment and they stay native to a digital environment in a way in which like also incorporates reality now, which is something I'm very much interested in. And if you jump to my um, AR pieces, like this is the culmination of my path, I would say. Right now I'm in this very experimental stage of um, dabbling in AR and VR. And I had this idea a long time ago when I first started my project in permanence where I wanted to create basically dioramas and have people kind of exist in my world and in my thoughts. And you know, now I'm actually finally able to do that. And if you jump to my um, last AR piece, Paperweight, this is a piece that um, is connected to Paperweight, which is also a digital print. And for me, this piece represents everything I kind of like want my art to encapsulate. There's it has a physical presence, like has been exhibited in real life, has the physical presence where someone can actually collect the digital print. It exists online and it also exists in this augmented space. So it covers like all these bases of all these areas that I'm interested in. And I think that it really shows like how um, complex a piece can become when you are able to, um, I guess, exhibit it in multiple ways and allow people to experience it in multiple ways. So for me, this collection right here is kind of like about pretty much everything that, um, you know, I've been working towards in the last, like, I guess, like 10 years and thinking about how to present my work. And um, I hope that, you know, when people experience it, whether it's something that is like an animation or a still piece of work, that they feel some sort of like vibratory connection through the patterns or whatever, nostalgia or mood, because I'm always trying to bring people into my reality or bring my reality into the world in a way in which um, is palpable. Thank you. We also exhibited this piece in Digital Art Month. We exhibited Paperweight in Digital Art Month at 393 in the immersive room, and it, it looked so stunning. We can share some pictures after <laughs> because I think it's really worth seeing how amazing it looked. You can also see Paperweight on the clear channel screens across France for Digital Art Month this June too. Just, just a little side note there. Oh, 3,000 right. screens. Yeah, so like if you guys like want to see any of this work like in your life, you can jump on my Instagram and you can check out my filters and you can pull any of us into your, into your space. So hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you, Rory. No, this yeah. is, I love this piece so much. All right, and last but not least, uh, Miriam, if you can tell us a bit about your book, um, let me know what artwork you want me to start with. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Miriam. I organize the platform project space Sky Fine Foods. Um, it's so nice to be here in the call with you and hear all about your work. So I'll just tell you about Sky Fine Foods. Um, we are a collaboration, a platform a space for kind of meeting and doing exhibitions and projects. And we've been, um, I think for about a year and a half now, and this is our second time participating in KIDAF. And I just have to say, it's been so amazing. It's such an incredible community gathering, such a nice international event. And it's been a really special to get to meet and see so much incredible work last year and this year. Um, so for this year's KIDAF, I organize an exhibition with um, the artists that you can now see on the page. We have Olga Fedorova, Irene Pitello, Alex McLeod, Tristan Yala, Masha Batsi, and Claudia Hart. And the exhibition is kind of loosely framed around concepts of touch in a digital framing. So with the artists, we have been in conversation about things like 
sensory reactions to the experiences we have when we're looking at digital content and also the kind of tactile experience of actually interacting with devices, how devices feel under our fingertips and how our bodies feel when we are like crunched over, you know, a computer. Um, so this is the kind of relationship between all of the works that were gathered here for Kadaf. Uh, we can go through all of the different works. I definitely encourage checking out the booth. Most of the works have really nice audio that um, I would love for you all to have a chance to check out each work and have a listen. Um, this is from Irene Pitello, who's an artist based in Portugal. Uh, Irene is driven by, actually, I would say that most of the artists working with Sky Fine Foods are driven by a sense of hybridity and interactions between the digital and the physical realities of our lives. Um, Irene's work she describes as sensorial aesthetics, as H2O and superfluid ecosystems. Irene's work is available um, if you choose to collect. She has many still images and many moving images. And upon collection, you can receive a package that includes a Geekly archival print of a selected work, a motion image, file, a JPEG, a tote, and a t-shirt, which is pretty cool. <laughs> and so we can also speak about, you can select any of the works, Andrea. This is from Alex McLeod, who is a Toronto-based artist um, who works creating all kinds of different virtual worlds and 3D spaces. This is a new work called Chrome Cloud, a more abstract work than some of Alex's other work, which is very landscape oriented. Whereas this work is an abstraction of a feeling that travels through space. We have two works from Alex McLeod, the pink one there is pink fabric, also a really mesmerizing experience. Um, watching this on loop is so calming and um, all about the textures and the interaction of the various 3D textures. And this image shows off, oh, so Sky Fine Foods and Habits, um, our website, our Instagram account, and also two different virtual galleries on the ArtGate VR platform. So this image is a documentation of the works, which are the CADAF show is also simultaneously displayed in our virtual gallery. And if you're interested, you can always message me on Sky Fine Foods Instagram, but ArtGate is accessible with a VR headset or a computer browser. It's just a simple download and it's a virtual interactive space. Um, so I encourage you, the show will be up for a bit longer than, than Kadaf, so I encourage you to get into ArtGate and happy to meet you in there too. Um, this is Tristan Yala's work. Tristan is a Malaysian Australian artist who does a lot of collaborations with musicians and festivals. Um, this work is a journey through virtual memories and you can, when watching, see the imprint of a fingertip which I found a really concise relationship with this idea of how our physical bodies are interacting constantly with the digital devices that we use. This is from Irene Pitello. We have two series as part of Kadaf. The other is Ikebana Inc. And this is Surf Noir. So same idea as the last, a collector can receive a whole package, uh, which is really nice. And there's a bit of selection opportunity in there. So maybe we can show Masha's work. This is also Irene. So Masha Batsy created these 
um, 3D handbags. These are 3D objects, not physical objects. And upon collection, Mesh is offering a virtual photo shoot where the collector or a selected person of their choosing will receive three images of themselves holding this handbag and Masha Batsy will like coordinate the shoot with the selected person. So I love this hybridity blending of our digital and physical experiences. And I think that's what Sky Fine Foods and the artists involved are really all about is connecting and changing our expectations. It's a really big honor to present this work by Claudia Hart. This work is from 2015. It's a unique edition and in Claudia will be upon purchase, minting this work as an NFT for the collector and has developed her own independent format of minting. So it's not minted with any of the more mainstream platforms, but she has her own um, minting process. So it's a unique addition and a unique minting process that would lead to NFT ownership. Um, a seminal work from Claudia Hart. And for those who don't know Claudia's work, definitely visit our booth, check out her bio and her website. And um, she's a very influential leader in the virtual digital scene. And Olga Fedorova. So we're also showing a new NFT from Olga. This was made specifically for CADAF, um, available on Foundation, also a unique edition. And this is called Hold Tight. And when I watch, I feel I have to hold tight. It's a blending of realities, nightmares, immersion, disassociation, as described by Olga Fedorova. And that's so interesting. Thank you so much, Miriam. So Thank yeah, everybody, please just kind of find food. This, this video, yes, yeah, you watch it. And like every time you watch it, you kind of discover something new. It's really interesting. Like you miss some things and then you rewatch it. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's really very cool. Yeah. Uh, maybe if we have a few minutes left, do we want to open up for the questions? If you guys have any questions or we will be sending the follow-up email with the links to the booth and links to the open sea and whatnot, foundation and stuff like that. Well, I actually, I wanted to mention that, so Sky Fine Foods is also in a collaboration with Diana Lynn van der Mullen, who's not featured in this booth, but we do have a current solo exhibition available on our website and in ArtGate as well. But Diana is being featured as part of the big collaboration that's happening for infinite objects. But um, maybe we can move. Of course. So Super, I think we can. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say that I think we can maybe Jess and we have Diana here and we have a lot of the people that participated in creating this infinite objects collaboration. So I was thinking we can take a quick look at it and Jess, Miriam and Diana can run us through a little bit and then we can open the floor for questions. But in the meantime, of course, if you have questions, please ask them on the chat and then we will open it for everyone. Thank you. Um so yes, this is a, a really exciting collection that we put together. We really wanted uh, to harness the power of uh, six female digital art focused curators and their undeniably strong connection with the artwork that they champion by the artists they love to work with. So um, I'm one of the curators, Miriam is one of the curators, Elena Andrea also curated one, uh, and then Ayak Shells and Zeba Jabbar. So we have uh, five really beautiful uh, infinite object, limited edi edition video prints. Um, and yeah, this first one's by Diana and Miriam. And uh, it would be great to hear from Diana um, if she wants to say something. Hi. Yeah, thank you so much for having me and for featuring me in the collection. It's like, it's like a dream come true, honestly. Um, I consider myself to be more of a collage-based artist, so I'm very much about the physical world, um, kind of very tactile experiences of collecting and rearranging, um, and this work has moved through quite a few different mediums, um, 
it's moved through like installation art pieces, murals, collages, uh, paintings, collections, things like that. And more recently, I have started to work with Unity technologies to create these environments um, that you can actually navigate through either in AR or in a 360 video experience. Um, also as like still images and prints. Um, and so it was just so great to work with infinite objects to actually like bring this video into the physical world and have it as an object that people can collect and put into their homes. And something that I'm really in particular excited about is that the framing of the artwork set into Lucite actually is the texture of the landscape within the scene. So um, I kind of texturize the landscapes with different collages that I've made uh, physically, as well as sculpturally. I'll kind of take reference material from uh, different sculptures or installations and digitally combine them to create these new worlds. So yeah, it's my, my tiny little briefing on it. I know that we're kind of running out of time here. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. And I wonder, Miriam, if you want to chime in about this as well, because I think this collection is really meant to highlight the uh, relationship that artists and curators have together as well. And it's really exciting to hear from the duo that made this happen. Sure, yeah. So I'm just, I'm so thrilled with how beautiful this Infinite Object whole series is. And each one is so special. Um, Diana and I have been working together now for over a year and we had definitely talked about infinite objects and this desire to be able to situate a small looped, endlessly looping video in the home of any collector or any person who wishes to spend time with the video work and um, I just love this work so much. I often have the feeling of this desire to just totally immerse myself in the world that Diana is creating. And I think this one captivates a really special feeling of kind of swimming and moving through water. It's like both calming and adventurous. And there's so much to see as it moves around the space, um, captures really the feeling of like, like summer and, um, you know, this movement through water, it's so beautiful. So I think you can hear from my voice how much I love it. And it's just so exciting to be part of this collaboration. Yeah, I, I agree. I think all of these pieces are extremely unique and exciting. Definitely go to, um, you can actually view them at the art fair, um, but also infiniteobjects.com. You can look at their collections page and you'll see the Kadaf Paris collection. Um, and yeah, I think all of them are, are very unique and worth um, exploring further and then maybe since Elena and Andrea are here if you the, if the two of you want to say something about uh, Valerie's piece but otherwise I know we're crunched for time so I think we're a bit crunched for time but we have so we have Valerie Grinchere one of um, an amazing artist that has participated in Kadav uh, many times and he chose Saturn song and I feel it's just such an otherworldly but it looks like a little bit vintage it's definitely a very special piece and as I think all of them are so when you go to infinite objects if you click like shop it's in curated collections under Kadaf Paris and then you can read a little bit more about you about its piece and it tells you the story of the artist and if not you can just ask us and we're always happy to tell you but um yeah so you just go here and you can see the five beautiful infinite objects for this one. They look so good together. I wish I could have them all, but <laughs> all right. So I think that that's the tour. So uh, we can open up the floor to anyone that has any questions or any comments or just wants to say hi. We will be in touch with the follow-up email though. Uh, all of the pieces that we showed are collectible pieces and we're so excited to present them. We're also gonna be organizing more tours. So uh, please uh, stay tuned. We will add you to our mailing list if you are not already on our mailing list so that you receive the updates. And yeah, thank you so much for coming on this Saturday afternoon. We 
are super happy that it worked out and we could show you the wonderful RAs and thank you for wonderful exhibitors for making some time on Saturday and spending it with us. It's a pleasure and an honor to have all of you as a part of the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We will share the recording. We will add it to our YouTube and afterwards to the Kadaf TV. So you can watch it after again. Thank you. Thank right. you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody. Nice Thank to you. Meet Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.